Hi, everyone. I, I hope you enjoyed our break with our cheese-covered <laughs> uh, little appetizers there. Um, cheese is a universal language. Um, and um, you, we, we know that the first part has been a bit tedious because it's, um, because it's set up and getting the basics down. But um, this, this is parts two and three are where uh, you're going to start to see Django come alive and it's going to be more exciting. So, so yeah. let's, let's dig in. Okay. Um, we're going to build our first app. And in Django terms, Django uses the word app differently than a lot of other systems. Like a, a mobile developer will say, oh, I'm building an app. Well, in Django terms, that's a project. For Django, an app is simply a Python package that is then coupled into a Django project. So a Django project like Instagram, Pinterest, Discuss, it's built out of a bunch of these little Django apps um, compiled together, couple, coupled loosely, and, and that's, how, that's how you build stuff. And so we're going to start on that, and we've already been using a few of them, but we're going to start with building our first app, which is going to be called Cheeses. Yeah, I, I wanted to expand on that a okay. bit. Um, so, so in a Django project, um, uh, it's typically you, you, you want to create a lot of small apps where each app does one thing and where and these these would be directories uh, within your uh, your pro your Cheesley project directory. Um, for example, you might have a a blog app that's um, that's the blog on your site at slash blog or um, you know any, anything that you think of. So like if we wanted to add recipes, we would create a recipes app. Uh, in this case, we are creating a cheeses app because we want to track cheeses in Cheesly. That's that's the the main uh, core functionality of of the site. Is is a kind of a I don't know, a simple encyclopedia of cheeses. Because yes, because we are Cheesly. We are changing the world for cheese. <laughs> okay, so uh, digging into things, we're going to go right to the command line. Under uh, Cheesley underscore repo, Cheesley, this is where you should be. Yeah, cd to that directory if, yeah. if you're not already there. And also, um, make sure your virtual env is still active. So um, if, if you closed your, your tab, your terminal tab, uh, you, might need to, uh, you might need to go back and, and activate your virtual env again. Okay. And once you've... Once you've Type Django admin.py start app cheeses. If you do ls, if you're on Mac OS X or Linux or dir, if you're on Windows, then you'll see in addition to manage.py, the static directory, the templates directory, uh, you also have a cheeses directory. And that is your cheeses app. That is the first. We, we are getting ready to add cheese to a very cheesy project. So um, is, is anyone trying running uh, that Django admin.py command and are they getting, is anyone getting a command not found? Ever, everyone okay? Okay. Raise your hand as you get a success. No output. No output. output. All right. Okay. That's probably, uh, uh, did you LS? Yeah. So you're, you're okay? Awesome. Yeah, and, and just look in that directory. Um, if you're ahead, just open those files in a text editor and start poking around and, and getting to know what's created by default in a Django app.
Audrey, are we ready to move on or should we wait? Okay, we're going to move on. A a anyone else need help or are we good to move forward? Okay, if you go inside, you'll see that there's a number of files. There's init.py, admin.py, models.py, test.py, and views.py. Um, this is what Django gives you out of the box. Um, the only files that are absolutely mandatory for an app in Django is the init.py and the models.py. Um, and it's just these two files, one and two, it's, they're, they're the boilerplate that makes up a Django app. Okay, so I'm going to go on forward. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to install the Cheeses app into our project. So if you go into Cheesely repo, Cheesely, Cheesely, settings.py, deep into the cheese, um, there's a... If you search inside that file, you'll find installed app, and there's a tuple, or tuple, and um, at the bottom of it, we're going to add cheeses, just like the name of the app that we have. Not cheesely, but cheeses, and we're trying to confuse you. You're going to try and not be confused because you're smart. That's why you're here. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so you're going to add a little app called, called cheeses, and... There's this trailing comma. Please put that in. Anytime you're doing lists or tuples in, in Python, just get in the habit of always adding that trailing comma on the last element. It'll just save you a lot of grief if you remember to put it there. It's just a, a, one of the quirks of the language. And um, if you, yeah, and, and if you look at that list of installed apps, what are the other installed apps in there? You, you, uh, you're probably recognizing static files uh, when in our in our uh, templates. If you recall, we we um, at the top we had load static files, and um, that was using the static files app. Um, and you'll you'll see us using uh, other apps as we go on, or adding more apps. Okay, everyone, good. Raise your hand if you're done. Awesome. Boom. So, we're going to dive into some code. Um, would you like me to guess this one, or do you want to type it out? Uh, raise your hand if you want to type it out. Okay. Now you do have the slides, so um, rather than guess it out, because we don't know if the network's good, I'm going to ask you to find this as in, as in part two of the slides. About um, I don't have these numbered, unfortunately, because um, we... We're just learning the slide software. Um, but I'm get, while you look for this in the slides, I'm going to explain a little bit. Uh, Django's ORM lives inside of uh, this, this package right here, um, Django.db.models. That's where the ORM, that is what allows us to hit the database, which in this case is SQLite. And then we're going to define a custom model in Django called Cheese, which will represent of all things, cheese. <laughs> and um, what these things here are, f are for choices. These are choices that people can select on this field right here at the bottom, which is called firmness. And Django, um, uh, for example, we, we only want to let people choose from unspecified firmness, soft firmness, or hard firmness. And this is where we determine the choices. And we actually put this information in the model. So that way, if we're using the model in another location of the project, I can just do um, if cheese.firmness underscore hard equals equals whatever value I'm passing in, I know that it is a hard cheese, like Gouda or, um, yeah. So, um, but then we also have these other fields, and these fields represent models.car field, in this case, represents a character or a text, I guess a character field in, in the database. And description is a text field, which is, you know, a, a long character field, a text field. And of course, firmness is an integer field. So it is, um, it is what would we call that? An integer. It represents some kind of integer data type. And then, uh, in addition, when we define this, we specify some metadata, like this is the, um, well, this is the, this is what this may or may not be what the database calls the column when it creates the database. 
What this is right here is what it will present to you and me as developers and users when we use um, different parts of Django. Okay, excellent question. So in Django, null equal tr equals true is is telling the database that we can have a null field in there. In a the null value a saved null value. into the database. A, a null value. And what blank is for is it is for Django's uh, form library. If it's blank, that means it can accept a blank string, an empty string, or an empty value into that field. So this is for the database, and this is for the widget. Now, um, one of the things to keep in, well, there's, there's uh, if you want to ask me later, there's, there's a, we are accounting for a problem right now in Django 1.6 beta in, in with, this code. With uh, South. With South, so, which is a migration software. So that's actually reflected in this code, but... Um, yeah, nor normally for, uh, for car field and text field, you wouldn't have to have null equals true, but because there's this, um, there's this bug in, in uh, South when dealing with SQLite, um, we, we have null equals true in there. So d don't worry about it if you're worried. If you, you can, know Jang you and can, you're saying, how can we have null yeah. equals true, there's, there's a very good reason for yeah, that. Yes, can. sir. That would be a typo on my part. This used to be a car field, but I changed it to represent, um, yeah, it I changed it last night to represent the fact that I didn't want to just have three types of character fields. I wanted an integer, integer field. field doesn't have max no, it doesn't. That's what he's yeah. raising. Yeah, integer <laughs> field does not have max yeah. length, so we should take So that. ignore this. Don't, don't type this. This uh, max length, that's, that's my mistake. Um, that was a good catch. Very keen eye. Yes. Yes. Um, no, actually, Django wants a nested list, and the reason why Django does this is because when Django was originally created, there wasn't there wasn't a built-in order dictionary in Django. I mean, in Python. Now there is, but this remains, and also. This is fast, and although really it's not a performance issue for this, but yeah. Um, and then we're later on, we'll cover how to internationalize this, is which gets kind of interesting too, so yeah. Okay, does everyone have this copied into their models.py? Raise your hand if you do. Okay, then we're gonna move on forward. Okay, um, we, are, we just discussed a lot of this stuff. Um, okay, we are now going to update the database. Uh, so at, whoops, this should be at cheesely repo slash cheeses at the same level as manage.py. Type python manage.py sync.db and you should see something, uh, sync db, sorry, and you should see something like this. Uh, that is in Cheesley repo slash cheeses, the same level uh, as manage.py. Cheesley repo slash cheesely. Sorry, so cheesely. It's, it's the only directory that contains a manage.py file in it. Um, yeah, I always remember by just doing ls or dir and just seeing where my manage.py file is, and that's and that's the directory from which you run syncdb, you run run server, any commands that that uses manage.py. Yeah, just think of manage.py as a Python script that you're running. Yes. Oops. Yes, there's no uh, objects in this case would be from fixtures as if we, that would be as if we had an import that we could bring in of, of previously defined cheeses, but we haven't defined any cheeses yet in the course, so. Um, that comes soon. Yeah, it's it's talking about uh, cheese objects here. Yeah. So there's there's nothing in the database yet. Doesn't cheese object sound like some kind of processed cheese thing from a factory? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. Is everyone good? Did everyone sync DB? Raise your hand if if it worked. Okay, we're gonna move forward. We're making progress. Yeah. <laughs> 
so yeah, and this is what we just talked about, is that um, if, if you did look in your database, um, cheeses underscore cheese is a table that it's called. This is the app name that we called. So yeah, we, we are really deep in the cheese now. I keep saying that. I don't think I know what that means. Um, so <laughs> this is the, the, the app. And then this is the model that's created. And, and Django does this so it's easy for you to identify. If you open up your database shell or your database GUI, it's easy to identify tables. If, if I had a model in there called um, fries, right, like cheese fries, that's an American thing, it, it would be um, cheeses underscore fries. So that's, that's kind of the pattern that it go, follows. And um, so anyway, and the database is empty. So what we've done is we've used the startup command to create a new Django app. Um, we've learned how to define Django models. And um, you're now familiar with the character field, the text field, and the integer field. OK. Oh, and how SyncDB creates SQL database tables. OK. Now we're going to get into the Django admin. Um, so. Going back to our story, <laughs> we, you know, since you guys are doing the work and we're doing business development, um, we went and talked to investors and they were really happy with what we've done so far. And the thing is, is we told them that we're using Django just like Instagram does. And yeah, and they, and they, they said, hey, we've, we heard that Django is, um, is known for having this admin. That's that framework with that admin, right? And so, and so they, they were like, can we see it? And, um, and we, um, Danny and I didn't know what to tell them. So we said yes. <laughs> and <laughs> so, and we told them that they could see it tomorrow morning. So, um, yeah, I know that, yeah, so. Yeah, so, so now let's, 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 let's get it working. <laughs> okay, so, um, all right, so we're gonna get the cheese model editable and the admin interface. Um, and have some fun with it. So um, these three lines, actually, let's, let's take a step back. In Cheesely repo, oh, sorry, this is supposed to say Cheesely. This is what oh. um, Job was pointing out. So this is supposed to say Cheesely, cheeses, admin.py. Um, if you see that file, put in these three lines of code. I want you to write them in. Don't, don't. Whatever you do, don't copy paste these because if you're going to do Django, you're going to write something like these three lines a lot. So just get in the habit, build the muscle memory of adding this to yeah, Cheesely che repo slash Cheesely uh, cheeses admin pie. I'll get out of the way so you can see it. Yeah, and you'll you'll notice that um, uh, Django 1.6 uh, created the admin.py file already for you, so you just have so to yeah. open it and edit it. I, I'm going to fix this slide really quick because there's another problem here. Oh. I know. Yeah, so open, open your copy of the slides locally in the meantime. <laughs> Sorry, I told you not to do that. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so there's a reason why I fix that. It's so that way, one, I fix this bug. But uh, more importantly, when you test it, when you start up run server from Cheesely repo slash cheeses, um, oh, it's supposed to be Cheesely. Oh, I didn't fix that one. Too late. You guys have to figure it out, right? You guys are developers, so you have to learn how to debug my mistakes. <laughs> you always have to end up, you always learn to debug. Like the guy who comes before you, you always end up debugging his stuff or her stuff. But anyway, once you get there, open up 127.0.0.1.8000 slash admin. And you should see the login screen for Django's famous admin. 
And if you do, enter in the username and password that you created an hour or so ago. I hope you remember that password. I told you not to use a strong password. <laughs> There's always somebody who says, I forgot my password. Okay, anyone need help? Raise your hand. I am on my way. You're good? Are you good? If you see che the cheeses um, app, or like cheeses slash cheeses, start adding cheeses. Oh yeah, this is what you should see. I think everybody's there. Um, and then you should see this screen, and you should be, you should already be adding cheese, because cheese is awesome. Um, and here's some example cheeses, camembert, or camembert, if you're Americanese, um, Gouda, 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 okay, so, all right, I'm going to ask three people what their favorite cheese is, raise your hand if you want to say your, because think about this way, we are, um, from the United States, we want to try cheese. Really, I'm not, I'm not joking at this point. And we want to hear your recommendations. So, well, raise your hand uh, if you want to give me a cheese that we should be trying. You, sir, in the back. Cabrales. What? Cabrales. Cabrales. Okay. From okay. From the north. Parmesan. It, we had Sorry. some. It's amazing. We are really surprised to find that you guys have Parmesan here, too. <laughs> But it was really good. <laughs> and what about you? <laughs> okay, I think we've heard of that, yeah. All right, over on this side, uh, give me a few. Come on, this, this side's dominating on the cheese. There's a, a cheese in the Czech Republic, I don't know the name of it, but it's called, it's known as the stinky cheese. And it smells okay. really bad, but it tastes really good. Like Limburger, or? or? <laughs> no, it's like very crunchy. Really? Okay, so we have a stinky cheese in the Czech Republic. There's got to be a couple more on this side. There's American and there's Swiss. What's up? So the New Yorker gives us, what? Cheese Whiz. Cheese Whiz, okay. Is every, are you from the U.S. as well? Philly. Philly. Okay, so there, we have the American response. Quagga. What? Quagga. Quagga. That's what stinky cheese is called. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So. Yeah, so. What's that? Mozzarella. 
So does everyone have uh, have a couple of cheeses in their admin now? Okay. So one of the things you'll notice, unfortunately, is that they all look like cheese objects. Like they're from some weird factory, um, and it's all made from inorganic components. So I guess at least this way it's protecting the environment. <laughs> because there's nothing natural in there that's being consumed. That's what cheese objects looks like. So let's try and fix that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we, we have a word for this in the US. It's called cheese whiz. Cheese whiz. Yeah, it's cheese object. <laughs> OK. Vel Velveeta. Velveeta, yeah. Um, I think that's made for margarine. So, this is the one place that we'll probably get to today where we have two different versions of the code. Go into Cheesely repo, cheeses, cheeses, models.py, and um, you'll see after all the other code that you've added, this is one code block, this is a second. We, we need to fix the shading, but next time. If you're on Python 3.3, this method is def space two underscores, str, two underscores, and then you type the rest of it. And this is the hipster 3.3 way. And then <laughs> if you're boring and stodgy, um, this is the old way, which is we're using Unicode. Um, once you do that, go back, make sure your server's started, go back to the cheesy, the cheese admin screen that we're looking at where we saw the cheese objects that scare us. Um, and uh, refresh it, and you should see the names of your cheese. Yeah, and you, and you don't need to stop and start run server for this one. Um, you only need to uh, restart run server if you're making changes to URL.py. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's I need to find that one out because I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, it, when in doubt, restart. Yeah, when in the thing is, is in Django, if something doesn't pick up, like you make a change and something doesn't happen, restart it. It's it's no big deal. Maybe it's. Okay. So does everyone have a success? Are we seeing Cheddar, Halda, Camembert? So the thing about the Django admin is it's been in Django since um, uh, 2004, 2005. It was there as part of the initial release when it was open source. And as you can see, it looks awesome if you're in 2005 or 2009. Um, and so um, it's a great tool. It's awesome. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with it, that w we do with it, but at a certain point you hit a wall and it can't do much. It gets really hard. And this is why um, we're working on Django Admin 2 at the sprints. And so if you want to join, even if you think you're a beginner, we can still use you be for, for all sorts of things, um, to code, to document, to help us explore what to provide. And um, we have a, a huge amount of support from the community. And um, But we're using all the stuff that we're doing, that we're doing in this course, you can still use with Django Admin too, which is really awesome. I'm, I'm just curious, uh, show of hands, how many of you are attending the sprints? Okay. okay. Cool. Well, if, if, you're, um, if you're not attending, uh, I definitely encourage you to attend next year because it's, it's such a great opportunity to, um, to learn a ton and contribute to Python. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, all right. So what we've what we've done, what we've learned, we've registered the cheese model with Django's admin interface. So we had in the admin.py, I think there's a, a function call that goes admin.site.register. Well, we registered the cheese model. Um, we logged into the admin and we got a taste of what the Django admin can do um, with cheese. And we also used the, the cheese model string, or, or in the case of Python 2.7, Unicode method. So now we have a better display of cheese objects in the Django admin. And 
we can actually, we'll also be using that Unicode or string method in other places as well. Okay, let's get into some more Python code. We're going to add views uh, to the Cheeses app. Um, so I think we, it's time for us to return to the story. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, um, the investors really liked it. They were blown away. They said, wow, this is awesome. This is like a CMS. Are you guys ready for launch? <laughs> and um, the problem is, is that they, they want to be able to show off the site to their friends, right? They want to see data that then they can add or that, that they can present on uh, Chauda and Camembert and American cheese. Um, and so we need you to get this for us. Yeah, and the, and the thing is that the Django admin is just, it's, it's intended for site admins. It's intended for, for um, you know, you and the other developers and maybe the other people at your company, but it's not, it's not really meant to be a place where the general public will create accounts and log in. Actually, it's dangerous to let general people come in. As you can tell, you've got access rights to user management and group management. Well, you can constrain that. It's still a gateway into that, and the hackers know about Django. And Django is a good security record. One of the things, one of the reasons why is because um, the security experts say don't let outside users access the Django admin. Um, there's also performance issues. The Django admin is slow. Um, you, we won't notice it, or if you're administering a site, you won't notice it because it's you and a few other people using it. But if you get 50 or 100 people using it, even on a fast server, Django will start running slowly. Um, and that, again, is a legacy of, of some of the code in there that dates back, you know, since before some kids walking around here were born. Because <laughs> um, Django is an old framework now. Um, so what we're going to build is we're going to build two views, a list view for cheese. So we want to get a list of the cheeses. Um, and then we're going to build a detail view so we can see what the deal is with the cheese. And again, um, we can help people find this in the slides, or you can just type it out. Um, inside Cheesely repo, cheeses, cheeses, slash views. And if views.py doesn't exist, you'll have to create it. Um, put in this code. This is your, this is where we're importing a couple, oops, that was really not graceful of me. Yeah, so, so just make sure your views.py looks just like this. And you can see that um, when we define views, um, we are explicitly giving these views um, the model that's associated with it and the, the template to use for the view. And the other thing to remember is it's from dot models. We're using relative import paths in Python. That's the cool, hip new way. Yeah. And by the way, um, you, you've probably heard about Django class-based views, um, uh, <laughs> list view, and detail views. Like, you, you can see that you're, we're, we're subclassing these, these views. These are, these are class-based views. Okay, let us know as you complete, just raise your hand. Okay. I'll walk around. Okay, how's everyone doing? Should we move on to the next slide? I know some people are probably racing ahead, other people are.
taking their time. One one thing to um, to note here is um, is that there's there's this really uh, standard convention of of calling of naming your templates this way. So naming your list template the lowercase model name underscore list. Naming your detail view template lowercase model name underscore detail. And you you may find some some uh, places online even. Uh, tutorials where where you don't have a template name here because because um, if there's no template name it it just uses uh, what it thinks is the default uh, uh, template name right and they, right so what Audrey is mentioning these are actually defaults for Django we we're making you <laughs> we're making you type them out so you get used to the pattern because it's yeah. good to learn these things and it's it's also better to be explicit in your code you know, always err on the side of, of being explicit. Okay, shall we move forward? Raise your hand if you need any help. Uh, where, which way were you raising? You, oh, okay, way. okay, so you're saying move forward. Okay. All right. Um, uh, actually, what we're going to do, we're going to switch things up a little bit. Let's, before we make the templates, let's, let's force some errors. Let's see the errors when we don't have the templates. So, um, in Cheesely repo, Cheesely cheeses urls.py, um, put in this code. And you can copy and paste this from slides because this is challenging, especially when we get into the little bit of regular expression. Unless you know Perl um, or another language that relies on regular expressions, this might be confusing. Oh, no, this is correct. This is correct. We're not going into Cheesely Cheesely che URLs. We're going to Cheesely Cheeses URLs.py. So this is, a, this is in the Cheeses app. Thank you for pointing that. What's your name yeah. again? What's your name? Yeah, Angelina. Thank you, Angelina, for pointing that out. So yeah, she's so got a good eye for detail. So, sorry, so we have to create the URLs.py. Yes, you should be having to actually create the URLs.py. Yes, yeah, so the, the URLs.py isn't created by default because sometimes you have a, a Django app that doesn't need URL patterns but um, but I don't know usually you usually you want to create a URL stop high for your Django apps usually you have URL patterns okay and as you complete this or you think it looks good raise your hand so okay if if you finish early, um, uh, look at this and try to try to decipher what's going on there. Yeah. What what does this regular expression mean? Who here knows regular expressions? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. So. Okay, that's good. As, does everyone know Perl? Raise your hand if you're Perl developers. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. I was just. Okay. Awesome, good call. Yeah, and you'll and also notice that URL patterns have have a name. So like this URL pattern is called list, this URL pattern is called detail. Okay, we're going to move to the next slide. I'll just jot forward, and, and for those of you who are ahead, we can also move back. Okay. Uh, you'll notice also that we are uh, importing patterns and uh, and URL from django.conf.urls.
Uh, you'll you'll see you'll see soon. This one? This one. Um, that is uh, one of the things that you can do with Django is it will do some magic to determine um, what certain things are named in, in the URL patterns. We do not like that magic, so we just always leave it empty. And so that's, that's what it's there for. Most people just leave that empty. But, you know, you can... Yeah. When you use that magic, the debugging results you get are a little bit different. So, yes? Who, me? Oh, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, that's the thing. The debug messages are a little bit different, and so it can really throw you off if you're not used to it. Anyone need more time? More time? Can we, all right, go ahead and move forward. Okay. So, so now um, uh, I know that this has been a bit confusing, but now we are actually going into that. Um, the deep cheese. The the main <laughs> the main URLs dot pi. Yeah, this is the main. This is the the root URL the, conf. The same one that you had been working with before. The yeah, the root URL conf. And here in the, the highlighted portion is the line of code that we want you to add. And now you're probably wondering what the namespace value is for. So the namespace is, is similar to a general Python namespace, but it's specific to URLs. And you can see here that we're including cheeses.urls, which is, which is what we created a moment ago. Okay, any questions? Any? Raise your hand. Okay. Oh, you've, uh, awesome. So if you have this right, you should be getting a, what is this kind of error called? Template does not exist. Uh, you should be getting a template does not exist error when you go to, when you go in your URL to 1.7.01 slash 8000. Yeah, I'm intentionally doing it. Sorry. 
Sorry. So um, if you go to cheeses, you should be getting a template does not exist error. That is the error that we want you to see. Okay, I'll help him. Okay. Can you talk him through this? And Did you create a did you create a template there? Yeah, so if if you're done with the the previous step, you can go ahead and um within your existing templates directory that you that you should have already, just create a cheeses directory. This is this is a this is a, a directory that's named cheeses because your app is also named cheeses. So so this directory will contain two templates for your cheeses app. And it, in in the next slides um, there there's uh, the code to the code to put in each of those templates. So if you finish early you can go ahead and and put that in. Um, does everyone who here has had a template does not exist error? Raise your hand. That's what you want to see. Who here is having any other issue? Raise your hand. Okay, so we'll, we'll be coming on.
Okay, does everyone have, uh, who here is at, has a template does not exist error that they haven't resolved yet? Okay. Uh, okay, I'll be right with you. If you have a template does not exist error, follow these steps, what's on this slide, and then you'll get just a dull blank page. Okay? Awesome. Then you, you're doing well. All right, does anyone need help or can we move forward? Raise your hand if you need assistance. Okay, everyone's good? Then, okay, we've done that because um, we, we bounced around a little bit. Um, so real quick, because this was a bit of, a little bit confusing. Um, this doesn't really help, so we'll skip past there. It's a little bit confusing. I didn't, don't have cheesely and cheeses, and that's confusing anyway. Um, okay, so... Just to let you know, here's a little bit of terminology. You'll see um, Audrey and I sometimes will refer to it verbally or in writing. We'll say URL conf, this word right here. And that's just our like elite way of saying urls.py. Um, that's all it is. Um, and it's how, uh, these are how Django handles uh, dispatch and routing of requests. Okay, and then... Um, if you go to these things, you'll just see the blank views that we talked about. Um, it's, uh, let's, let's get, of course they're blank, so we need to fix that. So, and this is in your slides, so you can find it. And again, we apologize for no slide numbers. But you can uh, copy and paste these, this information into your cheese list template. So template slash cheeses, cheese list, HTML. And while you do that, we will entertain you by discussing what's in the highlighted lines. The first thing, I can't remember your name, sir. What's your Marcus. name? Marcus. Marcus asks, what's this detail name in the cheeses urls.py? The well, name parameter. The name parameter. This is the name parameter. And then in the root urls.py, there we, you know, that where we are pointing at the cheeses URL, this is the namespace. Namespace and the name. Okay. Easy. And then we're passing in, as we're iterating through a list of cheeses, which you've written, and hopefully you have our favorite cheeses in there, or the ones you suggested. As we iterate through them, we call the cheese.primary key PK. It's, it's just a um, proxy for the primary key. And if, and if you recall, in the, um, in the urls.py for the cheeses app, uh, there, was, there was this um, regular expression that had PK in it. So, uh, yes, the typo, I think, because the first, uh, second part of the process, cheesely, right? Where? Yes. Oh, yes, cheesely. this is, thank you. This is supposed to be at cheesely repo, cheesely, oh, wow. Okay, so thank you for helping us debugging. That's part of the course for making you think. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you need me to cover your behinds at work, uh, just call me. Um, I'm really good at it. Uh, as long as it's not me and then I fall apart. So, yes, thank you for debugging that. Um, if you've done this, if you're, if you're head, if you think you're awesome, get rid of the dot name after cheese and just have cheese and refresh a page and let me know what you get. And if you... Okay, what, what do you get? Is it, do you, what's different? Is anything different when you get rid of dot name? Uh, 
<laughs> so anyone, does, has anyone detected if there's any difference when you get rid of the dot name after cheese? No? Why is that? Yes, you did the S str or the Unicode function. And so all that does is, since it can't find anything else, it, it attempts to call that. So um, nice, nice bit of thinking there. Is that URL's namespace, is that new in Django 1.6? It's been around for a while. It, it's not used much. Um, but admin's been using it for ages. And we just find that if you show it people to people when they're first learning Django, they, they love it. If you if you're like us and it comes to you, it comes to you later, it's it's hard to remember and yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's one of those old gems that people have started to rediscover and are starting to use a lot. And it's it's good. How? It's it's explicit. It's cheeses. That's my namespace detail. I, I could be wrong. Um, oh no, we prefer oh. to do cheese.name, but sometimes, sometimes you forget. So Django just tries to do like do give you this little favor. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. You should do it the cheese.name way rather than just doing cheese because you're implying yeah. like, hey, give me, give me whatever the, the string representation of this. Yes, cheese. sir. Okay, I will be come over. Anyone need more time? Anyone else? No. Danny. Oh, okay. Okay, let's let's get in a cheese detail template. Go ahead. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, so if you haven't done it yet, go to um, go to slash cheeses and um, and see your cheese list template in action. Um, you'll notice there will be links on it. The links don't work yet. Let's make them work. So, um, but first. Um, uh, go and at, at the repo level, this is supposed to say Cheesely, Cheesely repo cheeses templates, cheeses cheese detail. Thank you, <laughs> Angela. Uh, and then, again, this is in your slide, so you should be able to just copy and paste it in, uh, unless you want to type it in. Um, and there's, uh, while you guys are doing that, we'll go over a little bit here. Uh, Django templates, um, you can see I've got if statements, I've got, you saw we did loops, um, and uh, you can actually go and look and see all the different commands that the Django template has, what it can do. I can tell you it's not that many, and if you try to do fancy things with, the Django, temp with Django templates, um, complex logic, it will fail you. 
It is not meant for complicated business logic. We are not coding in PHP. Um, or um, So Django tem Django's template language is intentionally stupid. This is considered a virtue. Your business logic, the complex stuff, should go into Python code. Python is designed for clarity. When you start mixing business logic with HTML, your code becomes harder to maintain. So this is why you see, for example, in the PHP community, you're not, they, they believe the same thing. Business logic does not belong in HTML. The, the really good PHP people are like that. So, yeah, um, and this, this stuff, you know, it looks, it looks kind of like Python. It's not Python. It's, it's the Django template language. Yeah. So um, anyway, if you actually go to cheeses slash one, Oh, okay. We have a question. Oh, uh, the, uh, the other one? This one? Cheese list. Oh, this one. Oh, you're wondering how it's there. It's implicit, right? Uh, so... <laughs> The cheese list view, or the list the, in Django's, Django's class-based generic views, the list view will pass in a object list. Um, and you can change cheese list to object list. And that is the list of objects that Django is querying the cheese model for. And it will also look at the name of the model, which in this case is cheese. And so you can either call it as object list not this way, or you can do cheese list. So that is why that magically appears. So um, yes, I could have picked it's on Django for this in my talk last night. Yeah, cheese, cheese list is a const context variable, and it's, it's, um, it's just, you can think of it as one of the features of uh, Django's list view class. That list view gives you, gives you the object underscore list variable in your templates. Does that answer your question? It's a bit confusing. Um, let me think of a better way to describe it, and, and um, I'll, I'll explain it later. I actually have a blog article about it. I'll point you to. So, OK. All right, so if you go to, if you go to find your cheese, what's that? OK, if you go to cheeses slash one, and you look at the, what's, what's being generated by your new cheese detail file, You'll notice that the firmness will be like one or two or three um, instead of um, unspecified, soft, or, or firm. And um, this is why. Because when we're calling cheese.firmness, we are calling the direct integer representation of the firmness level. So if it's soft, I think we assign that one. If it's hard, we assign that two. And that's... Um, that's great for the database. It's great for queries. It sucks for display. So in Django, it's kind of this weird pattern. But if I go cheese.get variable name of the choices field that I'm trying to pass, underscore display, it will change it to what I want to see. So in this case, I want to see what well, you want to change this to, this one line, the firmness line, to cheese.get firmness display. And then you'll see um, if you have um, uh, Gauda or Gauda, you'll see uh, <laughs> hard. If you have Brie, it'll be soft, and so on. But it's only for choices field. It's only for choices field. Okay, so let me know if you have if you can see soft, hard, or unspecified cheeses. Raise your hand as as you get success. Awesome. Have you noticed we're proceeding more quickly? Yeah, we're almost up. Okay, so we have about five minutes left, unfortunately. Okay. So real quick, this, as you can tell, is a method. This is not an attribute. 
in Django, you can do method calls um, as long as you're not trying to pass in arguments. If you try to pass in an argument, there's no way to do it in the Django templates. That, again, was a conscious decision. Um, so if you go to a shell and you have a cheese model instance, because you've done a query to get it, um, and you do get firmness display, and then parentheses, you'll see the value. So um, when Django tries to, when Django looks at an object that's in the template, um, the first thing it does is it says, okay, is, is cheese.name, is dot name this, this thing, is this a callable object? If I put parentheses on it, will it render? And that's, I think there's, um, there's a Python built-in called callable that detects it. And then also, um, it checks, is it a dictionary? Is, is, is cheese a dictionary, is a name and a, 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 a key within that dictionary? So even though the syntax is cheese.name, the Django template language will actually say, okay, cheese bracket quote name br quote bracket, will that evaluate? And if it doesn't, then it says, okay, is dot name, um, is that just an attribute? Can I just dis uh, attribute or a, a property? So it's kind of, um, it does this quick look up and it gives you the response. It's kind of kind of nice. Um, but there are some people who find this constraining and there are, are alternative template languages. Um, our, what we like to do is we like to stick to the Django template language, put our business logic in the Python and keep it there. And then if we do need, um, like we do need to generate something with like, you know, that's five gigabytes of size um, for a single document, then we'll look at alternative ways of building it. But for most web development that you do, using Django, the Django template language is fine. Okay, so if you go back, you'll see that. All right, and then um, let's actually add cheeses to our nav bar to show that we have um, this display of our CRUD, our, our create, uh, read, update, and delete app. Um, so just add this URL, and you can see again we're playing with the namespace. So you see cheeses colon list. This was in our URLs.py, and so that way you can see it in your nav bar. And just keep refreshing as you do stuff so you can see the results. So how much more time do we have? Okay, we have 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, and you can see, yeah, I'm, I don't know, can anyone debug this sentence for me? Um. <laughs> I think I, I couldn't break out of the recursion. Uh, who here has got this link working in their nav bar? Raise your hand. Okay. I'm going to race ahead since we only have a few minutes left. Um, what we've learned, how to use list and detail views, how to create custom templates and supply them, and how to define app level URL patterns, um, and how to include app level URL patterns in a project's root URL conf. Um, under a namespace. So we've learned namespacing and how to use the URL template tag to reference URLs and templates. So um, we don't have enough time for self migrations. Um, actually, real quick. So um, South is Django's database migration tool. And this is a trivia question. Um, it, it's for, let's say you want to add, let's say we want, we're not getting it into, into it today. Let's say you want to add a field to the Cheesley app, like a photo field right, and an image field. Um, the question I want to pose to you is how long do you think it took me to figure out why South was named South? <laughs> Actually, let me ask you a first question. Why do you think South is called South? Does anyone know? Can we right, yeah, so how long do you think it took me to get it? <laughs> Years. Um, this year, I, I learned it, even though I been using South since 2009, so. Okay, any questions? I think we're pretty much out of time. I know that gentleman in the back had a question I need to answer better, you. I'll, I'll, yeah, any questions? 
So keep the slides. Um, you know, feel free free to work through them, and uh, um, we'll be around for the conference. Go ahead. Yeah. Again. Uh, oh, a question. Um, we we don't know. I mean, probably in a month or. Probably or two. in a month. Yeah. Um, right now, it's at 140 pages. Remember, we we converted a lot of the content to slides. Yeah, but we uh, still as have fast to as we test could. it several times, and you know, iron out. Yeah. yeah. We're <laughs> <laughs> Maybe rename it. Um, yeah. But you know, we'll we'll be around for the rest of EuroPython and through the sprints, and um, and we both encourage you to to come and ask us if you have questions about about Django, about you know, virtual env, about um, like if your setup is messed up and you need help getting it straight, or um, any anything that you can think of. Take advantage of your time at EuroPython because um, you know we're. We're here and we we love helping others. So, so yeah. And uh, I think that's yeah, it. That's that's it. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. And um, oh, again, uh, we we do have. Uh, if anyone is.